What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk, of course, all about Hurricane Lee. It's a major hurricane still. It is going to get stronger before it weakens over the next few days, and this could impact land by the weekend. We'll show you where we'll talk about what is now steering this thing. Also this weekend, we could have another storm to develop, and this is going to be one to watch down the road. Long time to watch this one, just like Lee, but it could get close to the Caribbean islands in the next 7 to 10, maybe 14 days. So again, we're really watching this one for a long period of time. We're going to have a complete breakdown of all the models. Hey, before we get into this video, if you do want to stay updated on the weather, and of course, as we venture through the rest of hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that if you find this content helpful. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Post that in the comments as well. All right, let's get to it. Lee has been beaten up, all things considered, from its very powerhouse state, a strong Category 5 hurricane uh, late last week. It battled wind shear over the weekend. It's now trying to fight that off a little bit, and it's getting some thunderstorm activity back around the northern side. It's been dealing with some dry air and some wind shear. And again, you see that flare up of purple here. This is as of the 11 o'clock hour trying to wrap around the center we will see if lee can do that that's an indication to us that it's trying to strengthen again and it is forecast to strengthen again right now is 11 o'clock 120 mile per hour category three storm but it is expected to get back to category four status over the next day or so before it gradually starts to weaken again and that's going to be courtesy of what was hurricane franklin it sat there and churned up these waters that it's going to be moving in through and really cooled things down. So we can thank Franklin for the weakening trend that Lee will eventually go on over the next couple of days. But you see where the cone is pointed. This is where we could have some land impacts. You see way up here, still a Category 1 hurricane. This is Saturday, so still a long time to watch and a lot to iron out. But certainly if you're watching from New England, watching from Nova Scotia or Newfoundland, parts of Maine, which is in New England again, eastern Massachusetts... We're going to want to pay close attention to this. We're going to get into that in just one second as we break down the models. But here is the deal in terms of this trend that will eventually weaken Lee. Note where this rust color is. And let me pull out my temperature query here. That's water temperatures of the low to mid 80s. So it is very, very warm still where Lee is going to travel over the next 24, 48, 72 hours over the next one to three days. But watch what happens when we get up here to the west of Bermuda. All of this water has been cooled by Hurricane Franklin. It sat there and brought up the water. Now, this is still warm enough to sustain tropical development. Certainly, once you start getting below 80 degrees, that's not the greatest environment, thankfully, for these systems. But nonetheless, that is one of the reasons why we're going to see that weakening trend because of the cooler waters brought to us by Hurricane Franklin that sat there and churned things up a little bit. All right, so this is for my friends now in the Northeast, New England in particular, and then the Canadian Maritimes. Latest computer forecast, again, continue to show this lifting north, again, bending away from Florida, bending away from the Southeast, and the Carolinas. We talked a lot last week. A lot of people were showing the models, that the old models of Hurricane Irma, saying that, no, this is going to continue west and hit Florida. We talked that that likely was not going to happen. Irma was really steered by a, an abnormally strong Bermuda High. This Bermuda High was not as strong as being weakened uh, by several different features. Nonetheless, this one's going to eventually turn again to the west of Bermuda. Likely the center of the storm staying to the west of Bermuda. And then look at where the lines go. All of these represent a different model. Again, the GFS is in the purple here. That's going to take it towards Maine. Again, that is just one of the models. And then we also have the Hurricane Wharf, the hurricane model from the National Hurricane Center here, kind of bending back towards New England a little bit. It's one of the reasons why the cone widens out, because there is some uncertainty as to, is this thing going to make a hard left turn, or is it going to just lift and then impact parts of Maine, parts of the Canadian Maritime. So there's a lot going on. Before we get into some of the ensembles, and I do want to show you that, those are going to be very kind of critical as to showing you some of the outcomes here as we get to this upcoming weekend. But I want to show you this. What is actually steering it? This means more than what the actual model show. This is the meteorology behind the models, if you will. Big chunk of high pressure. This is what we were talking about last week. We just weren't sure how strong this was going to be. All the blue and teal color here represent where we have high pressure. The red represents low pressure. So here is Margo way out here. 
This is as of uh, Friday. And then here is Lee, still a formidable storm, still a strong hurricane at this point. Now, I want to put this into motion as we kind of go through the weekend here, and it gets close to New England, but this is Saturday. One of the things that we are going to be watching here is, does this area of high pressure that's kind of draped across the North Atlantic prevent Lee from completely missing land? At this stage in the game, it certainly looks like that. It was one of our concerns. It was last week. It was one of the reasons why modeling started to hint at that happening. And we've just gotten more and more data to suggest that that area in the North Atlantic may be strong enough to kind of push this back through. It's going to block. These things really block almost like offensive linemen in football again. Lee's trying to get through, sack the quarterback, if you will. And then we have the offensive lineman, that big chunk of high pressure, preventing that from happening. And it's going to try to direct Lee towards the Canadian Maritimes and into parts of New England. Where it ends up exactly is still yet to be determined. Nonetheless, it is looking likely that we are going to have an opportunity, unfortunately, for some kind of land interactions. Now, this storm is going to weaken. We're going to break down these lines that you see here. These are the European ensembles. Again, each one of those lines is a different member of the European ensemble. It's the different initial conditions kind of put in to give us a wide range of outcomes rather than just one forecast point. I'll show you the GFS ensembles as well. I just want to talk about the colors first. What you're looking at here, the green, is wind speeds of 40 to 50 knots. So that's a strong tropical storm still. Potentially impacting areas from as far to the west as Connecticut and then as far to the east as not hitting land at all. So that is the wider scope. The outliers, though, are these three here. Towards New York City, that is likely not going to happen. And then we have a couple over Massachusetts. We have a few out here. Again, the direct escape is looking less likely as well. So what the most likely solution here is, given what we know right now, and again, this is still about seven days away, five to seven days away from potentially impacting land, is somewhere in here, really from Maine to Nova Scotia, is what we're really going to have to look for because of this big building blocking high pressure center. So that is the European ensembles. And again, that shows it kind of a strong tropical storm. Some keep it a strong hurricane. And it's still going to be powerful, even if it is just a, quote, just a tropical storm, because it is going to be interacting with other upper level weather features as well to keep this thing kind of powerful. GFS ensembles paint a, a similar picture. It does have a little stronger coming in. You see the color is getting more yellow or orange representing where we have 50 to 60 knot winds or 60 to 70 knot winds pushing hurricane force a little more but it also has it a little further west it does have considerable considerable more land interaction as well when compared to the european notice what most of these kind of focus in on nova scotia maybe extreme eastern maine with a few outliers over connecticut into massachusetts and again just everybody as we are kind of waiting for this thing to make the turn and we'll get a better idea of what that high pressure is doing to this thing everybody in new england the canadian maritimes needs to keep this in the back of their mind because it over the weekend this thing is going to get close now regardless of what happens with this if there is direct land interaction we are going to see really nasty beach conditions over the next couple of days and really over the next week or so there is friday the center of Lee is hanging just to the west here of Bermuda. Look at the wave heights, though, kind of pushing right through the Atlantic coast. So nasty rip currents, large waves, really from the northern end of the Caribbean islands through the Turks and Caicos into the Bahamas, Florida, all the way up into Georgia, Carolinas, and then into the mid-Atlantic as well. And all of this water is just going to be kind of pushed as well. So while we're not going to see direct impacts in Florida, while we're not going to see direct impacts through the Carolinas or mid-Atlantic, we're going to see potentially some beach erosion, some coastal flooding, certainly rip currents, and then wave heights that are really, really big. This color here, the yellow color that you see a lot of, that is that 9 to 12 foot mark. Those are some pretty big waves coming towards Cape Hatteras, the Outer Banks. We're going to watch that as well. But again, we are not expecting direct impacts in the Turks and Caicos, in the Bahamas, all the way through Florida, and then to the Carolinas as well. But it is going to impact the eastern seaboard because of just how big this storm is and the wide reaching effects of it and that surf right into the uh right into the beaches yeah that's going to be nasty for sure over the next week or so here is the broad look here here is the tropical development over the next seven days and what we are going to be focused on here is really all this blobbiness 
right on through here. There are two X's. The one we're really concerned with here is going to be this trailing X, although I do think both of these are going to be kind of pinwheeling around each other, and this is end up going to be a huge broad area of low pressure that kind of has a chance to develop as it moves into that orange shaded color that the Hurricane Center has drawn there. That's where conditions are going to become favorable. I do think this is going to take a little while longer to get going just because there's this big hodgepodge of thunderstorms here and each one of these little clusters are going to try to become the dominant one and as they are all trying to fight each other it's going to take some time. We'll stretch each other and just Think of it like a bunch of puppies fighting or something to try to become the top dog. It's going to take a while for that to happen, and that's why I think it's going to take a while for us to get a consolidated area of low pressure. Here is the Euro model spin again. We're looking for the deep area of red. And note, at this point, September 15th, so four or five days out, we're looking at a very broad thing here. We could be close to tropical development, but it's still unorganized. It's taking its time to get going and then you see finally unfortunately it takes it it gets together there's the red so here is our system by september 19th we like the euro though it does show it going northeast of the caribbean gfs paints a similar story it takes further and notice how we have still on september 14th this broad area of low pressure it's not consolidated it's a very weak disorganized thing by September 17th, I think we have a system now. At least a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm at this point, according to the GFS. Now, the good thing is with this, it does, for the most part, keep it north of the Caribbean islands as well. Although we're really going to have to watch the northeast corner, maybe Puerto Rico further down the line. This is so far out there now. We're more than a week out. And then you see it's continuing to ride a little, potentially towards the Turks and Caicos, because the GFS initially kept it weaker. From an ensemble standpoint, that's exactly what we have looking out here. These are going to be the European ensembles. What you see up here, this is from Hurricane Lee, so disregard that. We're looking at the spread here that does, again, for the most part, keep it northeast of the Caribbean. Most of the L's are up here, and we also have another grouping of L's up here. So there's kind of that fork in the road. Weaker system going to tend to go up. Uh, stronger system, I should say, going to tend to go up. Weaker system going to tend to ride low. The American GFS really gets this thing strong. Again, this area here are the models from Lee, but most of them kind of bend. Here is Bermuda, right where my little crosshairs are up there. So we would like that the best if it gets strong and then just goes up and out and leaves it alone. Again, something to watch, but that is way, way, way down the road. Again, just want to keep putting it out there that post Lee we still have some things to watch uh, that we're unfortunately not over yet although we are on the better side now of peak again peak season is really the second half of August through October so don't get carried away with okay we've made it to the peak we're done there are still a couple things to come here it looks like certainly potentially next name storm coming as early as this weekend and early next week hey thank you guys so much for tuning in if you found this content helpful please give it a thumbs up if you do want to stay updated on all things weather and especially as we go through the rest of hurricane season you have to hit subscribe please do that if you found this content helpful i would love it if you give it a thumbs up it really does help us out a lot thank you guys so much for tuning in hit that alert bell as well you'll be notified when we're on when we post new content and we'll catch you next time